Welcome to this demonstration of the CBC software as contained within Sati Software's SSI Web. I'm going to create a simple CBC study today, or choice-based conjoint, regarding uh, vacations that we might take. So I'm going to go ahead and click File, New Study, and we're going to call this thing Vacations. That's the name of my project. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the questions area. And by default, I don't really have any questions except for the initial start questions, but I want to add beneath the first page break a CBC exercise that we're going to call uh, Places to Go. We can name the CBC exercise whatever we want it to be called. First, the software asks us to type in attributes. And we have three attributes that we want to specify today. I'm going to click the Add button and add the first attribute which is called destination. And I'm going to click OK and the Add button again. And now we're going to list our second attribute, which is called length of stay. And my third attribute is going to be cost per person per day. For each attribute, I need to specify multiple levels. So I go over to the Levels area and I click the Add button. And the first attribute has three levels of Honolulu, Hawaii. That's one place we can go. Or we can go to Los Angeles, California. Or we can go to uh, Paris, France. Our length of stay, we're going to specify as levels. We can stay for three days. We can stay for four days or five days. And the last attribute is going to be the cost per person per day. And we're going to say that it's $300, $400, and $500. Now we could do other things as well in the software, such as prohibit certain combinations of levels from ever appearing. It's a little bit dangerous to specify such prohibitions, but the software would allow us to do that if we click the Prohibitions button. We could include um, some graphics, for example, um, in, to represent the, uh, the levels instead of text. But to keep things simple, we'll just stick with text today. Moving on to the next tab, the software gives us different response types that we can do. The standard is the discrete choice um, that we've mocked up in this little photo here. Respondents can just pick which package they like best. The next type of response type is the best worst response type. You can pick the best option and the worst option within each task. We can also do a constant sum if you want to do allocations, but for today we're going to stick with the standard discrete choice. And now that we have typed in our attributes and levels, three attributes each with three levels, we want to generate our questionnaire or the combinations of attribute levels that are going to appear for each respondent. Now these have to be chosen very carefully so that each level appears an equal number of times and each level appears with every other level of every other attribute an equal number of times. And our software does so almost perfectly. We do it through a very controlled randomization process. Now the we can specify to the software how many tasks, these random tasks, these controlled random tasks that we want. And we could also specify, specify some fixed tasks or holdout tasks that would be asked the same way for each, uh, for all the respondents. But to make things simpler today, we're not going to specify any of those fixed tasks. The software allows us to specify how many concepts per task that we're going to show. And let's go ahead and use the defaults to show four product concepts, four alternatives on the screen. By default, the software wants to include a none option, allowing respondents to say that none of the things on the screen they like. And we could specify a traditional option or other alternatives. Right now, we could preview what we've got. And we could see that this is our particular layout. Here's our none over here to the right. Here are our products that are coming in and the option to select one of them and some default text. We might not like def that default text, so we can go back to the question text uh, tab and we can say, you know, which, which vacation would you choose? Or we could type French or Spanish or Chinese, uh, whatever we wanted to do to customize it the way that we wanted it to look. Now let's go over to the format tab. 
This allows us to control a little bit more how the formatting is done, the fonts and the colors, etc. But the main thing I want to do here is you may remember that uh, right now we just have these levels up here, but the respondent doesn't know what these levels really refer to. What does $400 mean? The cost for the whole trip? So what we want to do is we want to show the attribute labels to the left of the task by clicking this checkbox. And now we click the preview and now we can see that those have been dropped in here, allowing the respondent to know a little bit better about what we're talking about so that they can answer the question appropriately. Once we've done that, we're ready to generate our experimental design. We need to ask the software to create the blocks or the questionnaire versions that have the combinations, the carefully chosen combinations uh, to show to each respondent. So we're going to generate the design. It usually happens pretty quickly and we can see that the software has uh, generated the experimental design for 300 versions and we've got 10 tasks in each version, which gives us a total of 3,000 choice sets that it's created for us. Across those 3,000 choice sets, we can see that the frequency of each level occurring for each of our three attributes, and here are our labels again, is almost perfect. This is a basic overview of our uh, experimental plan, but I want to get a little bit more detail. So I'm going to click this test design button and I'm going to ask for two-way frequencies and also an advanced test that allows me to simulate what would happen if I actually collected, uh, let's say, 300 respondents who answer the, the none percentage about 20 percent of the time. So now I'm going to go ahead and click test and it generates that plan and it generates, excuse me, that uh, test and it reminds me of the tests we saw before, but now I want to specifically look at the two-way frequencies. How often does attribute 1, level 1, appear with attribute 2, level 1? Well, it occurs 1,333 times across all blocks of the questionnaire and all respondents. And so uh, you can see that within attribute 1 and attribute 2 that the design is nearly perfect. Each level occurs with every other level about a an equal number of times, and such is the case for any two attributes taken two at a time. That is the uh, element of orthogonality or independence of the factors. Now later, now comes our simulated data. We asked the software to simulate what would happen with 300 respondents who answered the questionnaire uh, randomly, and they have done so. Uh, answered the five positions in the questionnaire, the four alternatives, plus the fifth alternative, which is the none, about randomly. And we have estimated uh, some utilities for them. Of course, the utilities are random, so the effects are random. But we're most interested in the standard error. The standard error for my nine levels are all about 0.03, which is pretty darn good. It's right about where we want to be. We want to have a precision or a standard error of about 0.05 or less. That's a good rule of thumb. So it looks like this particular sample size, this length of questionnaire, uh, and this particular design is going to work out pretty well for us. Now that we've got things set up, we can take a look at how things look again and we say, you know, this is kind of drab. I'd like to have a different style. I'd like to see something a little bit nicer. So I go over here to the survey settings icon and it allows me to choose different styles. And I might look at these different styles and I say, you know, I really like uh, the I really like the desert style. That's the one I want. So I'm going to click that I'm going to use that and I'm going to go back and I'm going to double click or uh, either double click or edit one of my choice tasks. And I'm going to go ahead and preview it. And I say, you know, that actually was pretty ugly. Let's go ahead and pick something a little bit prettier. And so we're going to pick uh, Bellingham and we're going to use that one instead. At this point, I think I'm ready to test the survey. Um, but prior to do that, I think I'm going to add something on the start question that welcomes the respondents. Um, so I'm going to welcome respondents to the survey. And now I'm going to test it locally on my hard drive as if I was a respondent taking it over the internet. It fires up my browser and it welcomes respondents to the survey and it goes ahead and shows them the choice tasks and respondents select where they would like to go, how much is it going to cost, and trading that off against the length of the stay and maybe they wouldn't want to have anything. If the respondent forgets to answer something and just clicks next, an error message is going to occur and you can 
Um, you can customize what this looks like to tell the respondent that they need to answer it. Anyway, that gives you a very brief overview of how to set up CVC surveys in the software. It's pretty easy, but the software has a lot of additional uh, options that you can do if you want to make things a little bit fancier and do things that are a little bit more complicated. With that, thank you for your attention.